So shooters and reloaders, this of course is the Smith & Wesson Model 27 Classic. And if you've been following some of my videos, you know that it has a problem in that they drilled the sight retention screw hole all the way through the frame. And it happens to line up there just where the blast of the flash gap is. So what happens is that because that screw doesn't go all the way to flush out that hole, the hole makes a little vortex focus so that the blast comes back and causes a blast mark on our cylinder right there on every one of our cylinders. As you know, we get the blast marks on the front of the cylinder and we can get that off, but we don't want that little, that little focus blast mark right there on the face, the uh, side of the cylinder where it uh, really shows not uh, very attractive and other Smith & Wessons and other revolvers don't do that. So we're going to fix this. The hole should be not drilled all the way through. Well we're going to use JB Weld which is a steel reinforced epoxy. The epoxy bonds on to metals and the steel reinforcing makes it strong. So we're going to put a little bit of JB Weld into that hole and flesh it out so that it no longer focuses the blast. Now of course this requires a precisely fitting screwdriver to take out the little screw here that actually holds the yoke of the revolver in place. So we took that screw out and there it is right there. No damage to the screw because this screwdriver fits that screw slot perfectly. So we open, we got that loose, took it out, and then the yoke of the cylinder comes right out. The yoke comes right out and there's the cylinder. So we want to take that out first so that we can go ahead and fill in that hole. Now the next step is to use a Q-tip and some acetone to degrease this entire area. So we did that and then you want to let that acetone evaporate out of there. So let it sit for about 10, 12 minutes or so and that should have all the acetone gone. Now the neat thing about this JB Weld is you take this cap off and then you squeeze this plunger down and it extrudes an equal amount of JB Weld that you mix together and then once you do that you've got four to six minutes of working time to get that in there and so we'll use toothpicks to put that in into the area and then I use a pair of scissors to cut the plastic packaging into these little strips so I can use a strip to go in here and flush that out. So I made three of those strips out of that packaging. So uh, we're still waiting for that acetone to evaporate. Okay, so here I am squeezing out some of that JB Weld. Uh oh, looks like it didn't come out evenly, so we're going to go ahead and start it again. There you go, you need equal amounts. Then we'll put that back on, the cap back on, replace the cap. Now we'll mix this up. Now you know it's all mixed together when you get a nice gray color and get it off the, the toothpick. So there it is, all mixed up. Now, the moment of truth. We go ahead and put a small amount right where it'll do the most good. Right there. 
Then we use the plastic to flush that out. And a little bit more to make sure that's filled in. And then flush that out again. Use another piece of plastic. Get that as flush as we can get it. Try and remove the JB weld from where we don't want it. Well, can't show that to your real welder. But you get the idea. We went ahead and used the plastic to really flush that out. Now we still have working time, so if we want to add a little more, we can. Let's see if I can show that to you. And then use the plastic. There it is. And wipe away as much of that as we can can wipe away. That looks pretty good. Now you notice Smith & Wesson also drilled some other holes in the top strap, but they don't use them for anything. Now we're supposed to let this sit for about uh, six hours to set, so we'll go ahead and do that. Now we go ahead and use mineral oil to very carefully coat all the metal surfaces, staying away from our JB weld. And now this can sit for the next four to six hours. If you let the JB weld set up on this glass, you won't be able to get it off. But while it's not set, you can use acetone to get that off. And it also cleans up your work area. So now we're gonna vacate the area and let that acetone just disappear. Okay, so there's that hole filled in. Looks pretty good pretty flush. Now one, one thing about JB Weld is you gotta be careful you don't get it somewhere where you don't want it because the stuff turns into something pretty permanent. So here's the other hole over there that's useless. And there's the hole filled in. So you see the vortex is gone. Now we'll go ahead and put this gun back together and then we'll be able to shoot it at range and see if the sidewall blast marks are still going to be a problem. So we test the cylinder spin. Again, the cylinder spins in the direction that the little arrow is pointing. It's almost like that little cutout there for the bolt is an arrow. So we know it turns this way. And you see there's free spin. 
so that means no JB weld got into the flash cap or off the top strap, the bottom of the top strap to interfere with anything. So uh, we're back in action. We'll just go ahead now and and use the mineral oil rag to really wipe this down well and we're ready to go to the range. Now this repair that we just did is uh, not glamorous like some modification we might do to improve the way this gun works, this kind of thing. But still, it's a nice, uh, nice thing to do to make our gun better. Bye for now.